And I think they're serious. I think that, you know, telling their fan base, hey, don't get excited. We're not going to sign these guys. Thank you, our first guest of the day on FT Live, USA Today's Bob Nightingale joining us right now. I'm, Bob, great to see you. I'm going to let AJ start this off because he's already mentioned your name three times on the show. He is excited <laughs> to ask you about the ultimate stare down that is going on right now. So go ahead, take it away. Bob, when you talk to Boris, did you hear what we were just talking about when you were checking in that like, let's say a team, let's say the Giants call him and say, hey, we got five years, 150. Montgomery or Snell, who's taking it first? Who does Scott Boris call first? Does he call Snell or does he call Jordan Montgomery and say, hey, here's the option. They said they'll take either one of you. Who wants it? How, how does that work? Well, he knows where these guys want to go. I mean, obviously, Montgomery's pitched out east. His wife's in Boston going to uh, what, medical school. And the uh, Snell's are West Coast guys from Seattle. So I'm sure if it comes down to West Coast, say the Angels, Giants, something like that, he'll say, you know, give a uh, the first, first bid to uh, Blake Snell and anything else to Montgomery. Uh, it's interesting. A few GMs have joked and say, you know what, we'll give Scott $300 million. We want three of his guys. Scott, you divide up the money how you want, and we'll take the three. Wow. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, then, okay, let's get into the other two then. Bellinger, why hasn't he signed? There's one fit. It's the Cubs, right? Are they trying to bid against themselves? I mean, I guess the Giants, too, to some degree. And then Matt Chapman, we haven't heard hide nor hair about Matt Chapman in months. Where the heck's he going to go? I think these teams are playing it smart. A few of them say, you know what, we're not going to, uh, you know, all this hype and stuff about all these teams interested. We don't think anybody else is. And I think the Cubs have played this smart with Bellinger. I haven't heard another team that say, you know what, we really want this guy, except for the Cubs. I was at the Cubs uh, camp a couple of days. The players keep talking about Bellinger, the fans. Really, I'm not sure there's another place for him to go. It kind of reminds me years ago, remember the Boston Red Sox offered J.D. Martinez Five years at 110, and uh, Scott Morris had said, we're not doing that. He wants 170, 160, whatever it was. Dave Dombrowski never budged. Sure enough, he signed for five years at, at 110. I did the same thing here with Billinger. The Cubs are making this offer and saying, you know, we're not going to bid against ourselves. Either take it or leave it. Bob, what do you take from the comments that were made by people like Farhan Zaidi? Ross Atkins and Chris Young. To me, they all essentially said, we are done this offseason. Now, GMs are not the most forthcoming at times. So all of a sudden, at some point in the next couple of weeks, they could say, oh, well, an opportunity arose and we had to take it. But I just don't understand why a public stance has to be made like that, where they say they're done. I'll give the Yankees and Brian Cashman credit. He said, we're not putting our pencils down yet. But those teams essentially said, it's over. Let's play ball. And I think they're serious. I think that, you know, telling their fan base, hey, don't get excited. We're not going to sign these guys. Yeah, Matt Chapman falls in the Giants' lap, you know, at $100 million. I'm sure they'll say, okay, we'll do this. But I think, you know, teams like Toronto, Texas, aren't trying to get people's hopes up. I mean, Chris Young is pretty emphatic saying, this is our team. We're worried about the TV money in the future. You know, Toronto, same way, same way with Ross Atkins. So I think these guys are just being honest and said, we're not after these guys. Where, uh, you know, a lot of people still think that Cubs will be the most aggressive and believe that they'll get Bellinger plus somebody else. You know, maybe they get Chapman, too. Obviously, uh, you know, Bob Melvin has said, you know, I'd love to have Chapman. I've had him before. Very popular, obviously, in the Bay Area. So, you know, but why be against themselves? You said the teams are really smart. Teams are really smart at saving their money or teams are really smart at putting the best team on the field to win. Because Tom Ricketts said... Well, we have enough to win. The, I think that should be enough to to win the division. That's not what it's about. It's about winning a World Series. You know, I think what happened last year with the Arizona Diamondbacks, have all the owners now thinking, you know what? They barely squeezed in. They won 84 games. They got to the World Series. So I think they're, you're hearing that comment all the time from owners. I uh, heard it you know, from Mark Antonacci this morning, the Brewers camp. Just get in. You don't know. So I think that's why we're hearing it. So save money and get in knowing that, you know, what happened last year with the, uh, you know, the Padres collapsing, you know, Mets and Yankees not making it. And then with Atlanta and Philadelphia going out early, it shows that, you know, you don't have to win 100 games. You can win 84 like the Diamondbacks and still uh, get a win. Bob, 
the luxury tax exists to curb spending with teams at the top. The problem I have is when you read about the Yankees being over the luxury tax number and how much money it would cost them to get another free agent like a Blake Snell, they're paying 110% extra. So it's, it's basically double and more on any contract they sign at this point forward. There's a good article about how, you know, if Snell say signed for 40 a year, even if it was for a year or two, they're paying 80 something million dollars on that Blake Snell contract. I get it to an extent. The problem I have, and I know it gets into the salary cap and floor situation is that was made so that teams at the bottom can play catch up. But what happens when half of those teams don't play ball at all this off season, like the Marlins and the guardians? Yeah. I mean, that's a problem. I mean, even the angels, angels are about $40 million below the, uh, the first luxury tax. So I think they're kind of weighing the weeds. They haven't talked to, uh, Scott Morris in weeks, but kind of say, you know what? If one of these guys drop down to us, like a Snell or Bellinger, you know, double jump in. So, but yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to have people at least push the threshold. You know, that's why, you know, the National League Central, American League Central, as flawed as they are, at least those are very competitive divisions. I mean, the NL Central, like outside perhaps Pittsburgh, you can make a case for all four of those teams who win the division, where, you know, NL West, it's nice to see that, you know, the Diamondbacks payroll is the highest it's ever been, still below the luxury tax, knowing they're not going to catch the uh, Dodgers but still have a better team than a year ago. Uh, besides the fact that the Diamondbacks have the best hat going right now in their spring training hat with that blue and the snake on the top, which one of these guys signs first? I, which one do you think, maybe you think, will sign first? Will it be Bellinger, Snell, Chapman, or Montgomery? Or J.D. – heck, we'll throw J.D. Martinez in there too. Which one of the Boris guys? I'm going to go on the uh, – I'm going to go Chapman probably. Uh, I just don't know how much – there is out there for him. You know, one thing I think Scott's waiting for and it's happened before is waiting for injuries. Spring training games start Thursday at the Dodge and Bond race. He needs some injuries. Some injuries happen. People panic and grab some people. That would be the best thing there is just waiting. Sure, but you don't want to wait too long. Obviously, these guys want to know when they're going to spend the, uh, the, the summer, set up spring training camps. And uh, unfortunately for these teams, it's not like they can market the players. You know, they've already sold their season tickets and stuff. It would have been nice to mark these players all winter long, like the Dodgers did when they had jumped early. Yeah, they 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 didn't jump. They they bungee jumped off the end of a <laughs> gigantic bridge with you know the guys they signed. But that's what the Dodgers do. By the way, did you just say that Scott Boris is hoping guys get hurt? I I think I misheard you. <laughs> but nope, <laughs> they did. They're all sitting at the offices. I mean, seriously, they have like voodoo dolls sitting there going. Yeah, poke a leg. Poke, not like, too bad. Just bad enough. Down goes Jones. That's I mean, an ACL. That's, and they're like, let's fucking no, go. That's awful. Well, I mean, even GMs. I, we know what you're saying. We, we, we get it, Bob. No, I know. I know. We get it. We totally understand. All right. So then, so those those are the big five that are kind of. But then we talked about this yesterday. Tommy Pham, right? Hunjin Rio obviously went back to Korea. You know, Michael Lorenzen. Some of these guys that aren't the top five free agents left. Tim Anderson. How are these guys not signed? They're not requesting two hundred million. Tommy Pham's not asking for two hundred million. Tim Anderson's not asking for two hundred million. So why haven't teams jumped on these guys yet? These guys probably should have signed earlier than they are. Now teams are saying we don't have the money and stuff. But I think Tim Anderson's contract offer for the Marlins is about two million dollars. Hey, he just you know, he was making uh, what fourteen fifteen with the White Sox. So uh, I'm sure he wants you know probably closer to ten. I think you know, Tommy Pham made six and a half last year. He's looking for a raise. So I think these teams are just waiting for the price tag to come down and grab these guys at a steal. Uh, a lot of the a lot of agents say, hey, I want my guys to sign out before Christmas because these teams still have money. A lot of these teams have already filled those spots up, spent their money. So now that you know, pretty soon some guys are gonna start getting desperate here. What's the answer? Because the the deadline, we're never gonna have a cap. Deadline's been floated out there. What if there's some kind of like system where the team doesn't has to pay, you know, 10% less of the tax if you're above the CBT if you sign somebody before January 10th? Like, is, is there an answer out there to this extended free agency? Probably not. I mean, I know some GMs and stuff say, how about a deadline? Like, if you don't sign by this period, you can't get more than a three year contract, that sort of thing. I don't see that happening. 
but yeah, fans are bored out of their mind. You know, we're in a, you know, NBA, uh, you know, NFL, you had that little deadline. You know, it's like a, uh, the Alex Cora said the other day, it was great after the lockout there in 2021, where everybody signed in two weeks. That was a frenzy. We're just such a drip thing. You know, it just kind of defeats the purpose of, uh, you know, the hot stove thing. Uh, it's been so, so, such a slow thing that even when these guys do sign, I think people start to yawn. So I agree, Bob, first off. I mean, once you get to spring training, I just think a lot of the lore goes away. And we have games starting this week, really, right? And everyone will be ramped up by the weekend with spring training games, even if you don't have the big bets playing in it. So I think a lot of that shine has been kind of taken away from this free agency time period. So my question to you is to double down on what AJ said. Were you surprised to see that Ryu is heading back home? Do you think any of it had to do with this conversation? Like he's weighing offers or an idea of what offers could look like, and they're not sexy enough for him to stay in the United States. Oh, I agree. It must not have been getting anything close to what he was hoping to get. And see, so, you know what? I'll go get my money back in uh, back home, and uh, you know I can hit the free agent market a year from now. I think just said, hey, I want to play. I want to pitch. I don't want to be sitting out there until mid-March. I mean, remember, uh, what was it, Dallas Keuchel, that one year signed in uh, June after the draft. You know, nobody wants to go through that. You also wonder how particularly pitchers, how they're going to respond to up to camp late. I mean, start to get to a point now where you may not be ready by opening day. Okay, so is this the C word? Is this collusion? By the owner saying, oh, we don't have any money. Every team's like, we don't have any money. I find that impossible to believe. You tell me a Pittsburgh Pirates doesn't have any money to spend. A Tampa Bay Rays doesn't have any money. They got money. They just don't want to spend it, right? So is it collusion or is it the owners just basically getting together, which I guess is also collusion, basically saying, hey, F you, Scott. We're not doing it this year. You're going to have to figure out a new new strategy for your players. Yeah, I've not heard uh, any agent mention collusion at all. It's just that maybe owners are being smarter now. I think a lot of owners got burned. Uh, last winter's class wasn't, you know, great what happened. We all saw what happened to uh, Carlos Rodon. Hey, you know, hey, what happened here? You know, where's our money? You know, go back to Anthony Rodon for that matter and a lot of guys. So I think teams are saying, you know, we're not going to go into that marketplace anymore. We're going to be careful unless we get a, uh, a star player we count on. Uh, you know, a team like the Arizona Diamondbacks, I thought they got a steal when they got Doriel, you know, back for $42 million. But I think teams are saying, we're just not sure. Uh, I've talked to a bunch of uh, GMs and owners back east. They're not sure about Blake Snell. Hey, they know he can uh, he pitch well in San Diego, pitch well in Tampa. How many guys can handle, you know, the comp- or the, uh, all the pressure pitching back east? How big are the last two words in one of your tweets? For now, Mike Trout will be an angel. He wants to stay for now. How big is that? We're not even going to touch the next sentence right now, but the like, is this something that you think Mike might ask out if nothing changes in the next two or three years? Yes, the first time he's actually put an out in there and say for now. Uh, I think he's very curious to see what they'll do right now. They got plenty of money to spend. They haven't spent it. If they have another miserable year and he has a great year, I think they'll change it. I think right now it'd be hard for Mike Trout to say, I want out because he's been hurt a lot. I mean, people, uh, you know, New York always talk about, you know, what's going to John Carlos Stanton. He and Trout have played about the same amount of games. Uh, the Angels have been frustrated too that, you know, Trout hasn't been able to, you know, stay healthy just like Rendon. So I, I'm not sure Trout could say I'd like to be traded unless he has a healthy season. Because right now, you know, with the money he's making, you know, some of the Angels wouldn't get back nearly return as they would have, you know, three, four years ago. The other half of that tweet had another person in the bottom of it, and it was Anthony Rendon, Bob. What, what did you think of what he said? I think it was was it yesterday that he said those quotes where he's like, I mean, yes. listen, we all understand family comes first, face come first, all that stuff. But then to be like, yeah, baseball's just my job and I'm just here. And after what he's kind of done the last few years, thoughts on that? Because I was like, man, if, you know, we all thought this, we've all kind of mumbled this under our breath. But at the same time, like, 
I also didn't have the track record of not playing for a couple of years. Well, that was a trouble. I remember standing right there when he said it, and it was just, you know, ah, he shouldn't be saying this. It was just awkward. You know what he meant. I mean, go you know, around anybody, any, any line of work. You know, what's more important, your job or, or your family and, you know, faith. He's a very religious guy. He's just a wrong guy to say it. You know, it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, this winter when he says the baseball season's too long. You know, it should not be 162 games. You know, as you guys know, you can interview 95, 98% of players in game that will agree with him. He's just the wrong guy to say it. And I think he's the wrong guy to say this as well. All right, one more uh, fan question here for you, Bob, before you jump. So there's a question about the learners choosing not to sell the Washington Nationals. What was your take on that situation? It seemed like maybe the Nats were slow playing their spending for a while because that's what teams will do when they're getting sold. The Orioles kind of just did that over the past several years. So does this you know, signify maybe a change for the Nats? Because I like what they're doing and what they're building, but, I mean, their payroll also is way below what it used to be. Yeah, I think it just it signifies they weren't getting the money they thought they would. A lot of owners were actually upset. The Orioles only sold for uh, $1.75 billion. They thought it should have been gone for at least two and a half. Uh, you know, at least cleared over $2 billion. So I think they found out, you know what, people aren't going to give us what we want. We're going to take it back. You know, I think maybe the same thing happened with the Angels and Arnie Moreno. You know, Moreno says he had a change of uh, thought on that. But if someone gave him what he wanted, it probably would have been sold. I think the same thing with the learners. They just weren't getting the offers they thought they'd get. Wow. Okay. Well, let's get in there and buy a team, Bob. We can get it for cheap. <laughs> let's go. We'll put up your salary and we'll put up Kratz's salary, and I'll throw in a couple bucks, and we can get this team. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> we'll, use that, we'll use that 2005 World Series share. Here we go. That thing's, that's long since gone, Bob. <laughs> that thing, it's going on 20 years now, brother. That thing has been – I got I to gotta house Scott every day. Trust me, that money's long uh, gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I use the hair dryer every day. Yeah, jeez, my electric bill is <laughs> Electric bill is off the charts right now. Well, Bob, we appreciate it as always. Great to see you, and uh, hopefully some of this gets done soon. And uh, we'll keep our eyes out on social. All right, sounds great. Take care, guys. And tell Thank your, you. And tell your, tell you, your son you too. hello, too, for me, please. We will. He's in your old camp, your old Minnesota Twins camp. So you may see him. Oh, you. <laughs> you're going, aren't you? I, I think I'm going down there. I'll, I'll look for him. I'll find him. Yep. Okay. I'll Perfect. Find, I'll find that little rug rat running around. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy baseball the way it should be covered.